Seven items must be qualified in HPLC. In today's video, we will discuss the essential elements that must be qualified in high-performance liquid chromatography, HPLC, based on the EDQM guideline. 1. Solvent Delivery System The first item to qualify in HPLC systems is the solvent delivery system, responsible for delivering the mobile phase into the HPLC column at a consistent flow rate and pressure. Experimental Methods Flow Rate Accuracy and Precision To assess flow rate accuracy, weigh the mobile phase delivered over a specific time using a calibrated balance. For example, set the flow rate to 0.5 milliliters per minute and collect the mobile phase in a pre-weighed beaker for 5 minutes. Measure the weight and calculate the volume based on the known density of the solvent. The flow rate accuracy should be within plus or minus 5.0% for HPLC and plus or minus 3.0% for UHPLC. Repeat this test three times to assess precision and ensure the relative standard deviation, RSD, is less than or equal to 0.5%. Gradient Composition Accuracy A gradient program is run using water and water mixed with 0.5% acetone. The UV absorption at 265 nanometers is measured, and deviations from the nominal gradient should be within plus or minus 2.0%. Gradient Ripple During gradient operation, the ripple, fluctuation, of the composition should be less than or equal to 0.2% and can be measured by monitoring the baseline noise. These tests ensure that the solvent delivery system maintains precise and accurate flow, which is critical for reproducible chromatographic separations. 2. Injector The injector introduces the sample into the HPLC system. Accuracy and precision of the injector directly influence the reliability of quantitative results. Experimental methods Volume precision Inject a standard solution, such as caffeine in water, six times consecutively. Measure the peak areas and calculate the RSD of the injections, which should be less than or equal to 1%. This test ensures the injector consistently delivers precise sample volumes. Carryover. Perform a carryover test by injecting a highly concentrated standard solution followed by a blank, mobile phase, injection. Measure any residual peaks from the blank run. Carryover should be less than or equal to 0.2% to prevent contamination between samples. Injection linearity and accuracy. Prepare a series of dilutions, e.g., 0.5 mg per milliliter, 0.1 mg per milliliter, 0.05 mg per milliliter, of a standard such as caffeine. Inject increasing volumes, e.g., 5, 10, 15, 20L, and plot the response against the injected volume. The linearity coefficient, R superscript 2, should be greater than or equal to 0.9950, and accuracy should be within 1.0 well for HPLC and 0.2 L for UHPLC systems. By ensuring accurate injection volume and minimal carryover, this qualification helps maintain the integrity of the analysis. 3. Auto Sampler the auto sampler automatically loads samples into the HPLC system and often stores them at controlled temperatures. Experimental methods. Thermostatting accuracy. Place a calibrated thermometer inside a vial containing water and load it into the auto sampler. Set the auto sampler to a specific temperature, for example, for degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Celsius. Allow it to equilibrate and measure the temperature of the water in the vial. The accuracy should be within plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius of the set temperature. Thermostatting stability. After ensuring accuracy, measure the temperature at regular intervals, e.g., every 5 minutes for 30 minutes, to assess the stability of the temperature control, which should remain within 1 degree Celsius. These tests verify that the auto sampler maintains appropriate storage conditions for sensitive samples, preserving their stability. 4. Oven or cooling device column thermostat. Oven or cooling device regulates the temperature of the HPLC column, which is critical for consistent retention times and peak shapes. Experimental methods. Thermostatting accuracy. Set the column oven to a specific temperature, such as 40 degrees Celsius. Use a calibrated thermometer to measure the internal temperature of the oven at multiple points. The temperature should be within plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius of a set value. Thermostatting stability. Take six temperature measurements at five-minute intervals after the oven has equilibrated. 
the temperature should fluctuate by no more than 1 degree Celsius. By controlling the column temperature accurately and stably, these tests ensure reliable and reproducible chromatographic separations. 5. Multi-Wavelength Detector A multi-wavelength detector, e.g., uv slash vis detector, monitors analytes as they pass through the HPLC system. Qualification ensures the detector's ability to measure analyte concentrations accurately. Experimental Methods Linearity Prepare several standard solutions of a known analyte, such as caffeine, at different concentrations, e.g., 0.5 g slash ml, 1.0 g slash ml, 5.0 g slash ml, 25.0 g slash ml, 50.0 g slash ml. Inject each solution into the system, plot the response against concentration, and calculate the linearity coefficient, which should be greater than or equal to 0.999. Wavelength accuracy. Inject a standard solution such as caffeine and scan the spectrum between 190 nanometers and 290 nanometers. Compare the observed maxima and minima to known reference values, e.g. 273 nanometers for caffeine, with the allowable deviation being plus or minus 2 nanometers. Drift. Perform a drift test by running the system with a detector set to a fixed wavelength over a period of time, monitoring the baseline. The amount of drift should comply with the manufacturer's specifications. These qualifications ensure the detector's sensitivity and accuracy, allowing for precise quantification and identification of analytes. 6. Fluorescence Detector For methods requiring fluorescence detection, the fluorescence detector must be qualified to ensure accurate detection of specific excitation and emission wavelengths. Experimental Methods Wavelength Accuracy Excitation and emission use a standard solution that fluoresces at a known excitation and emission wavelength, e.g., quinine sulfate solution. Set the excitation wavelength to 350 nanometers and the emission wavelength to 450 nanometers and measure the fluorescence spectrum. The actual wavelength should be within plus or minus 3 nanometers of the set values. Signal to noise ratio inject a blank, e.g., deionized water, and a standard solution. Measure the signal at the maximum Raman band and the noise in a region with no signal. The signal-to-noise ratio should be greater than or equal to 400. By qualifying the fluorescence detector, you ensure that it is sensitive and accurate enough to detect low concentrations of fluorescent analytes. 7. System Suitability Tests Level 4 in Use Instrument Checks System suitability tests are ongoing performance checks performed during routine use of the HPLC system. Experimental Methods Peak Area Precision Inject a standard solution at least five times and measure the peak area for each injection. The RSD for peak area precision should be less than or equal to 1.5% for assay methods and less than or equal to 5% for related substances. Retention Time Precision Inject the same standard solution multiple times and measure the retention time of the analyte. The RSD for retention time should be less than or equal to 2%. Carryover. Inject a concentrated sample followed by a blank injection. Compare the peak area in the blank injection to the peak area of the analyte, ensuring that the carryover is less than or equal to 0.2%. Signal-to-noise ratio. For trace analyte detection, the signal-to-noise ratio should comply with the limits in the European Pharmacopeia. These system suitability tests ensure that the HPLC system remains in optimal condition during routine analysis, providing confidence in the reliability of the results. Conclusion In conclusion, ensuring that your HPLC system is fully qualified based on EDQM guidelines is crucial for maintaining accurate, precise, and reliable analytical results. Each of the seven components, the solvent delivery system, injector, auto sampler, oven slash cooling device, multi-wavelength detector, fluorescence detector, and system suitability tests has specific experimental methods for qualification that ensure consistent and compliant performance. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more insights into pharmaceutical guidelines and HPLC best practices.